Hey guys, thanks for joining me in another video tutorial. The subject of today's tutorial is going to be the exciting new page builder. At its core, the page builder is a modified version of Visual Composer with enhanced design and extensive support for salience elements. We're going to create a page that demonstrates and explains all the crucial elements of the page builders to get you up and running as quick as possible. Let's switch on over and get this started. As you can see, I've created a blank page for the purpose of this tutorial, and I'm going to create a row right now. The row is the fundamental building block of the page builder. It mimics the full width section shortcode, which you may be familiar with if you've used Salient before, but has increased functionality. Let's quickly take a look at the options. Note the option for type at the top. This has a monumental impact on how your row is going to display. Let's take a look at all three. I'm going to leave this row as the default in container and create two more rows so we can see the differences between them. I'm also going to add a background color for visual reference. Let's go with a nice blue and a text color of light. I'm also going to add a little bit of padding so everything isn't squished. Now I'm going to add a text block into this for visual reference with a little bit of dummy text inside. Now let's duplicate this and change the option of type for the other two. Let's change this one to full with background and to make this a little bit more dramatic I'm going to actually add a background image instead of using just the background color. Everything else is fine and now we can do the last one as the full with content. And let's also change this background again. Now let's save that and see how everything looks on the front. Okay, so as you can see the in container type option is going to keep everything that you place in the row, including the background set on the row, inside of the actual site container, which at its widest point in the wide desktop view which we're in right now is 1100 pixels. Going down further we can see that when enabling a full width background it allows the background property to stretch all the way to the edges of the screen horizontally. This means that whatever you set for your background, whether it be a background color, a background image like we have here, or even a background video will act as full width while your content stays centered in the middle. You'll probably be using this option on your row the most often. The last one, and new for 3.0, is the full width content. While this doesn't seem necessarily useful for text at this point, what this could be useful for is if you want to display an element full width that would normally be constrained by the container. For example, a map element. Let's actually go back into the page builder and switch this out to be a map so that we can get the full effect. Going down to our bottom full width content row, I'm going to delete the text box out of it since we no longer have use for it. And we're going to click to add a map element. Let's configure it to our desired settings. I'm going to quickly enter these in so that I don't bore you. And let's save that. And now I'm actually going to edit the row again and remove the padding that we initially set since we're no longer going to need that. As we're going to want the map to go flush up to the top and bottom of this row. Let's save this and take a look. And as you see, our map is now expanding the full width of the screen. With this row type, you can now freely break out of the container whenever you want, which was not possible before Salient 3.0, as you could only break a background out of the container. One last thing that's very important to mention about these row types is the margin that one of them inherently receives on the bottom. As you know, we set 40 padding for the top and bottom of each of these rows, which is visible by this space and here. But where is this additional white space coming from and why isn't it between these two rows as well? Only the in-container row type will have margin on the bottom by default because its most common use will be for standard content with no background image set. The margin's purpose is simply to create default space between content under it without having to set padding every time on your row. Both other row types, the full with background and full with content, will have no bottom margin as their intended purpose is to serve seamless full width sections. So if you're ever building up your page and notice mysterious space between your sections, check to ensure the row type and padding properties are set correctly. Let's head on back over to the page builder and take a look at columns. Columns work very easily in the page builder. Simply hover over the layout options tab and select your desired column layout. I'm going to quickly go with a three column layout and I'm going to divide that text up a little bit. Let's take a look at the column options we have. A cool one that you'll probably use most often is the column animation property. Upon enabling the checkbox, you'll be presented with the animation configuration options. Let's set up a quick column layout that animates in one at a time. Here I'm going to select Grow In, 
with no animation delay. Moving on to the next one, I'm also going to select grow in. This time let's give it a 300 millisecond animation delay. And the last one can also be grow in, but with 600 animation delay. Supplying a value for the animation delay simply causes the column to wait the specified time in milliseconds to animate in. Let's update this and take a look on the front. As you can see, they correctly did come in one at a time. But if this were a real page layout, we probably wouldn't want to keep this box background because it's touching the edge of our text on both sides. We could either remove this background color set the, and set the text color back to being dark, or we could simply expand this to be a full width background section. I'm going to go with the latter option so that we can have a seamless layout. Go back over into the edit row, switch this to full width background, and I'm going to give this some additional padding just for good measure. Now we can view the page. And you can see, despite it being a simple page, it is pretty good looking. And considering that it realistically would have only taken about a minute or two to make, it is pretty impressive. Let's go back into our editor and move on to another important topic. Does this make Nexter short codes obsolete? The answer is no, but how you use them depends on your preferred building style. You could technically avoid using the page builder altogether and stick in the editor screen. But even if you opt to use the page builder most of the time, you'll still find yourself using shortcodes for some elements, such as buttons, icons, and smaller things that don't make sense to have their own page builder element. Luckily for you, the shortcode generator is still accessible through the page builder in the text columns, so you don't even have to switch views. Here I'm in a text block, and we can see the Nectar shortcodes button above the editor still. We can click on it and add a button, for example. save this and confirm that everything still looks good on the front. And as you can see our button is displaying nicely. Let's head back on over into the edit page. Wrapping up, let's add one more flashy row for good measure. I'm thinking a video background row with animated pie graphs. To do this we're going to add a new row, which I'm going to position between two of our existing rows. Now let's split this up into a four column layout. And first let's take care of the video aspect. Let's edit this row set it to be a full width background, and enable the video background. As you see, we have an option for color overlay that has appeared, so let's just go ahead and use that as well. The video that I'm going to be using already has a blue tint to it, so I'm going to overlay black onto it so it becomes darker. And the video that I'm using is, of course, the city skyline pan that you've seen on the About Extended page on the live demo. I'm going to paste the source for that in here, and just because we're demoing this on one browser, I'm not going to supply additional formats, though. This would be needed if you wanted to have cross-browser compatibility. So this is almost done. We just need to add some padding. And I believe we were using 40 for other ones to make it consistent. Now we can go ahead and start to add elements to our columns. And like I said, we're going to use the pie chart. I'm going to quickly enter in some parameters for this one. Now that we have some dummy data in, I'm going to save this out, duplicate it three more times, and drag each one of these into their own column. Now we have a starting point to alter them for the rest of the values. Allow me a quick second to change the values in the other so we're not running all off the same parameters. Okay, and now I'm going to save this out and let's have a look at that on the front. And here's the finished product. You've now seen that creating interesting layouts with little time is an easy task thanks to the page builder. The only thing you're bound to now is your own imagination. As usual, I would like to thank you guys for tuning in to the latest tutorial. Now go have fun with the new page builder. Cheers, guys.